Hello everyone and welcome back to our second part on optimal control which is going to be about discrete time. And so there may be various reasons uh, for doing this. Um, first, obviously, we have a continuous time system that we need to discretize in order to work with it numerically on a computer. Or if we're working with data, we often learn dynamic systems from time series data so that we end up with discrete time systems in a very natural way. And so regardless of how we, we approach this or how we, where we come from, discrete time problems are actually very useful and frequently used. And before we dive in and look how this looks, we reconsider what we ended up with in the last video, which was the task to minimize an objective functional j, that is a functional on the state function x and the control function u, and it looked like this. So we have an integral over our time horizon of interest, and we have this tracking type function l, which depends on state and input. And well, this is in quotation marks because I've omitted all the arguments, but sort of what we looked at is, and, and this is something you see very frequently, is this quadratic form in terms of the state and another quadratic form in terms of the cost. And then the Q and R matrices are sort of weighting matrices that induce norms in terms of state cost or difference to a reference state maybe and costs in terms of how much control you need to to do right here i've used x which would mean that this is take me to the origin as quickly as possible whereas if this is a delta x a difference to some reference we can extend this to to arbitrary reference trajectories and then we may have this terminal cost as well but not in all situations however the, in a general form we we have it like this and it's a constraint problem because we have these dynamic constraints, right? At all points in time, these have to be satisfied, which makes it actually a hard problem. And if you want to derive optimality conditions in an analytic fashion, the way to proceed is usually via Pontryagin's maximum principle. So you try to derive optimality conditions for this continuous time system, and only after this, you discretize them in order to work algorithmically and so this is what we call an optimize, then discretize approach. And here we are going to follow the other direction, first discretize, then optimize, because, you know, as I said, if we're working with data, we may have a discrete time system anyway. And so what do we need to do if we want to make this transform is we need to define our time, not continuously, but on a finite grid. So we have T0, T1, and so on, until Tn. And we may have a time step delta t that you know, may change, but let's for simplicity assume that it's it's continue, uh, constant. So t0 to t1 is delta t and so on. Okay, and so if we do this, then we can transform this problem also into a cost function in finite dimensions and also the, the dynamic system in discrete time. So what we get is a, an analog formulation. Uh, we are still minimizing over x but now our x is an n times n plus one matrix, okay? So the state vector at, of dimension little n at n plus one time steps. And the control in a similar fashion, m dimensional, but at n time steps, you know? I will talk about this difference in a second. And then we have our cost function, which may be the sum from zero to n minus one, and then of this quadratic form. So we have x, k, transposed, q, x, k, plus u, k, transposed, r, u, k, plus, um, well, optionally, if we consider this terminal, um, constraint x n transposed and then another weight maybe is q final x n subject to our dynamic constraints which are now of discrete time form so x k plus one is a function of x k and u k and so a few comments are in order. Um, this f is obviously not the same as this f. You know, I've used a very general form and maybe we have identified this in some other way, but this is not the same f if we really have a transformation from continuous time to discrete time. 
I just wanted to stick with the notation. Um, and the second is, obviously, from a theoretical perspective, if this is a discretization of this problem, one needs to derive guarantees that, you know, as we go finer and finer in our time discretization, we actually converge in terms of the solution. But this is something we are not going to consider here in too much detail. Let's just assume that we want to solve this problem now and um, assume that, you know, if you have a fine enough discretization, we're getting closer and closer to the continuous time solution. So what we have now is, and this is really important, this k goes from 0 till n minus 1, right? because this will give me in the end the, the nth state step. And so this is also the reason why I only need n control inputs and I need n plus 1 or I obtain n plus 1 state, um, states in, in time. And so what I've uh, found here is an optimization problem because now everything's finite dimensional, but it is usually high dimensional. It is, if I have a nonlinear dynamical system, nonlinear. And it is constrained. And the constraint can be really, oops, sorry, optimization. So, shouldn't be talking while I'm writing. Optimization, well, no, like this. Not very pretty, but I guess you can read it. So this is the optimization problem. And if you look at this, we have n constraints, so the number of time steps. So it may be very, very hard to solve, but now we're in the regime where we feel maybe a little bit more comfortable with what we have already learned in terms of nonlinear optimization. And so this is already it. The, the thing that I would like to, to add is a small change in, in the notation to, to simplify the loss function a little bit. So what I'm doing now is I'm introducing capital X as the vector of states at my different time instances until Xn. So it's a concatenation of all my states. And so what you see that this is really high dimensional, right? I have, um, each of them has dimension little n, and I have n plus one of them. So it's a really, really large vector if I have many time steps. And I do the same for u, which is now u0 until u n minus one. Okay, so you see this is also very high dimensional, it's m times n, okay? But if I do so, I can try to make this thing look nicer, okay? And how can I do this? If you see that this is a sum, I have x0 times q times x0, x1, q, x1, x2, q, x2, and, and I sum these up. So what I can do is, if I have such a vector, I can try to replace this sum by something more, um, you know, closed form, if you wish, or, or simplified. And so what I can do is I can simply write or rewrite my optimization problem now in terms of big X and big U. And well, I will tell you what this means in a second. And I write it of this form times a Q hat matrix X plus the U matrix times an R hat matrix times U. And obviously I need to take the constraints into account once more. So what I get is x k plus one is f of x k and u k. Okay, and so what, uh, how did I do this? Um, and if you look at this way, we, I, I'm summing over the individual components, if you wish. So the question is now, how do, you do these q and r matrices look like? And actually, it's not very hard to see that we get these block structured matrices, okay? So if I define my Q matrix as a very large matrix with Q blocks on the diagonal, until here maybe, and then I'm adding a Q final here at the very end, then you see that this is a matrix. When I multiply with my X vector, I get you know, X0 times Q times X0 plus X1 times Q times X1 until n minus 1, and then I penalize the final state with this QF matrix, okay? So what I get is 
a matrix that is of very high dimension, so it's n plus 1 time steps times n state dimension, and then a quadratic matrix, so n plus 1 times n. All right. And so I get the same structure for this R matrix, where I have R hat as, again, a matrix with all these R matrices on the diagonal, so this block diagonal matrix. Okay. And so I'm still left with these n constraints as I had them here, but the loss function or the, the, the objective function looks very, very nice. And so you see it's a quadratic function in X and U, which is basically the dream formulation. And what's bothering me is these constraints. And so what we will consider next is um, the special case of linear systems where we see that this actually contains a very nice closed form solution. Right? And then after that, we will also have to look at nonlinear systems a little bit more. And then we will finally talk about data-driven techniques and you know, how data-driven methods or models fit into this control paradigm. So thanks a lot for your attention and see you in the next video.